Hello, every bunny. Today, we're going to be doing some 900 megahertz cordless telephone hacking. And the first thing we're going to do is get our FCC ID and get as much documentation as we can. And as you can see here, we have a bunch of test reports, block diagrams, user manuals, internal photos, and schematics. Yay, those will be important. Now, this is what the phone looks like. It's a standard mid-2000 era 900 megahertz telephone. Now I've gone ahead and grabbed the block diagram and this is the base. So we can immediately see that the CPU or microcontroller is a Toshiba TP, sorry, TMP86C8080 variant. Okay, now I have the data sheet on that. We'll pull that up in a minute. So you can see that inside the base that there are is uh, a data input, a signal, DTMF, the operating crystal, and then there's another component leading out to another IC that has a data, clock, and strobe. And there's also another data outline, another transmit line going into something else. We'll get into that later. And we got some lines over here for detecting on the plain old telephone system and for when the phone rings and you know battery detection down here in the lower corner. But what's really interesting is that this old 8-bit Toshiba microcontroller is only really talking to this other chip, IC1, which is a TB31262F, I believe. I have the data sheet open on that. And it, it turns out that it's a 900, 900 MHz RFIC that has everything you need already built in to make yourself a radio. So if you notice, there's a data clock and strobe. So let's go over to the schematic for a second. Now, this is the schematic. Let me rotate. All right, so right over here is our primary IC for the TB31262F 900 megahertz RFIC. And we have a data clock strobe. Great, which means this microcontroller is directly talking to the radio IC via pretty much standard sh uh, shift register style. Now, of course, in the handset, it's going to wind up doing some stuff with the keypad that the base is not going to do. And the base is going to have to handle uh, you know, encoding DTMF tones, indicating when the telephone is ringing, hence your bell in, and you know other like charge, detect, reset. And it does one other feature. Whenever you place the handset of the phone on the base, they pair together. Okay, now I have three of these things. and My original idea was to take three handsets and try to get them to sync to one base key. But every time you put the phone on the cradle, it changes the pair key. And, you know, that was my original idea. So now that we have the block diagram, we can see that this RFIC is pretty much doing everything we need to be an essential 900 megahertz dual band radio. We just need to know how to control the darn thing. In fact, we even see the audio feed inputs. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious how to how to interface into this. So, um, going into the RFIC chip, it straight up says, you know what specifically every single pin in this thing's going to do. So uh, let's go to the USB microscope. And right now we're actually looking at the Toshiba 8-bit microcontroller. Now this thing only has about 8K of memory inside of it. And I've already modded this handset. Now this we're going to be looking at the handset side for a second. And this is a mask ROM. There is going to be no reprogramming this. So we're going to have to wind up eventually simulating the various functions of what this microcontroller does. So the fact that we have the schematic already allows us to figure out what goes where. And now that we have, you know, pinouts and, you know, block diagrams of what the microcontroller itself is doing, we can get a better idea of how this microcontroller is specifically handling the RFIC, which we have way more interest in. So our RFIC is, now I had to decap the RF shield 
from this, but let me see if I can get a good view of it. Here's our, Tosh our Toshiba TB31262F, okay? And if you look on the right side, you'll notice there's this trailing lead of traces, then three staggered surface mount resistors leading off to traces going directly to the microcontroller with a couple of more surface mount decoupling capacitors. Now that little scar that you see on that via, I realized after taking the handset apart that the, the RSSI pin, the relative signal strength indicator, was on the keypad side. And I was so excited to get my grubby little claws on that, I didn't even care to see that it was leading into another surface mount component. So I just soldered some breadboardable leads to that. So now we can manually control the data clock and latch. And if you go through the data sheet real quick on this, let me kill the microscope a second. Uh, let's go into the, the data sheet. Okay, let's take a look at, at what some of these pins do. And uh, while uh, I do that, I'm going to get the base out because the base has way more pins broken out than the uh, than the handset. So now we're looking at the base. All right. And if we look at the base, it's, it still has those same control lines. And if you look at the left side, we're looking at pin 14. So if we bring up pin 14 on the left hand side, that's where we're starting. So we're currently at 14, 15, 16, 17, I think we're at 20. So we have pin 19, strobe, pin 20 is data, pin 21 is clock. Going straight to those three little res uh, resistors and the SIG out and RSSI. Now here's the interesting thing. If you keep looking at the camera first, at the microscope for a second, you'll see that the LND8 and RSSI pins are broken out. And if we follow these traces, they pretty much just snake all the way as we would expect. Here's a BDD voltage test point, so we can supply. Here's the charge detect pin off the primary microcontroller. If you look at the block diagram, you'll see that on the base. That would be something we'd want to probe. There's our bell indicate for when the phone rings. And then we have our traces that just go right into the microcontroller as expected. And there's also our mode channel switch that would definitely wind up monitoring that sense pin. And here's the Toshiba 8-bit microcontroller. And if you notice, it's not using as many uh, pins as the handset is. And I would just attribute that to it doesn't need as many I.O. because this thing doesn't have a keypad. So in essence, what we should be able to do is now that we have a block diagram and data sheets on both of these guys, what we should be able to do is take over the various pins. Oh, and just so I, I have a little footnote, there is the discriminator tap underneath the RF shield, which is basically tied right into the primary PA amplifier. Uh, if you want to get a really nice clean audio sample so to do any kind of like AFSK modem sort of stuff, we're going to need access to that. And all of this is underneath the can. It was The base was a bit of a bastard to get out, but the handset was quite easy. But what we really need, as you can see, are just primarily pins 19, 20, and 21. And we can go through the data sheet real quick. Let me just blah, blah, blah. All right. So it gives you an idea of how there's LNA mixers, um, two intermediate filters. Uh, you know, we've got the you know, some logic with a receive and transmit phase lock loop, because remember, this is a phone, so it's full duplex. And this explains specifically how the, uh, the whole block diagram of this chip works. But this is the important part, the data latch control. And it says it has 
four registers assigned by two or two or three code uh, two or three bits code data and it's read on the time of ah uh, god you know honestly i'm just going to throw this on my logic analyzer and look at what the hell's going on it's apparently it's some kind of 18 bit uh you know serial driven latch so we're going to have a clock we're going to have a data and we're going to have a latch so we're going to have to fill the buffer up with data you know according to the clock and then hit the latch so my concept is basically now that i have the phone modded with the breadboarded wires let me show you on the scope so these essentially tie directly into the microcontroller and the 900 megahertz system on chip and they're they're literally just breadboard probes so what i'll be able to do from here is tie this directly into a bus pirate a logic analyzer or an arduino via breadboard and specifically manipulate the data that's going to this rfic and because the rfic specifically handles everything you need with um you know volume the audio gain your everything is pretty much done via software on these three control lines once you gain access to these three control lines and communicate to them you pwn this phone so until next time cheers beers and bunny ears everyone